what if going noon and early 100 sub special and so whenever I see early I'm gonna give him two years with Nin that's how early he's gonna know it which I think is around the same how long that he actually knows Nin whenever the story ended which I'm sad about because if it continued, it might have been way good. It could have been, like, top three. Even though I think it's already top three in my book. But, yeah. So, the way he's going to get in is probably what you guys are asking me. And how I'm going to say it is whenever that dude comes to the... Greek, um, not Greek Island, but Whale Island. And comes to get... Just comes to find Gene. But whenever he gets there... He he sees a kid getting attacked by a by a bear thing. I forgot what it's called. A tiger bear. I don't know. You know, it's one of those bears and stuff like that. He goes over and he kills the bear, and then he goes over to the kid and like slaps him. And so, or punches him actually, and says that I don't like pointless kills on my record. And stuff like that. And that's whenever he says, ow, and then does, and he says, what are you thinking, kid? Don't you see those markings signifying that there's um, bears around here? But this is whenever he sees the cub, and he says, give me it. It can't survive without its mother, and that's whenever Gun protects it. I'm gonna say instead of him just instantly leaving, he goes there, and I'm gonna say there's a picture of him at the house, and Gun ask him, "Do you know my father?" And yeah, what? And he says, "What are you talking about?" And he says, "My my name is Gun Freaks," and that's when he says, "So you're the son of Jin." <laughs> Gona Jin. Jin. Yeah, I don't know. And he says, yeah. And I'm gonna say, he's 10 now. Whenever he gets there, um, I'm gonna say he's talking about wanting to become a hunter. And that's whenever he says, there's one thing you need need to have whenever you become a hunter automatically, even if you have it. You probably become a hint hunter easily. Whenever Gun hears this, he asks what it is, and he says, Nin. Almost every good hunter has Nin, even your father. Even me, also. And he asks, How do I get Nin? And he says, I can actually help you get it. There's a slow way and there's a fast way to do it. And he says, I want the fast way. And stuff like that. And he says, um, before you do that, you need to build up some, um, strength and stuff. And it'll take him three months to get strong enough. As strong enough to open three doors of the testing gate and kill his family. The Zodark family. And that's when Risa is perfect. You're strong enough now. He unlocks his Nin with Gon automatically getting it just like regular. And he's impressed and says, Good job, you automatically got control of your Nin down. And that's when he says, Then then we must train you and to use your Nin. And he goes over all the basic types of Nin. Like and stuff like that for I don't know, say five months. Once that happens, he tells them to go master them to a perfect point. And this is where he says, now we must practice Gyo. And this is, and he asks, what's Gyo? And he says, it's the combinement of controlling your Nin um, output, saying you can add, do, right now you can only do like 100% um, power or 100% defense. This, uh, this, but that makes you weak compared to the rest because they can just, 
they can change the fluctuation of power and defense with each other at harmony, saying that they can hurt you whenever you use 100% with 50% and 50%. Um, 50% defense protecting them. When he hears this, he says, oh, really? And, yeah. So, he practiced Gyo. He masters it, and that's... Well, this is when he puts him through hardcore training for the next, um, year. Putting rocks hanging up from a rope, making him sleep like that. I'm gonna say taking him to the other side of the island, making him go through the mountains over and over, making and placing down railroad tracks to help the village and stuff get across the whole area and stuff like that. While he's trained, and this is when he turns 12, with his teacher saying, Good job. Now you can become a hunter easily now. And that's where he goes, he tells Gon that he's going off on the same day. And Gon says, going off, he says that I'm gonna go explore the world like a hunter. And he goes off and stuff like that. And this is where Gon goes on the ship with all the hunter people. Where he gets on, and he goes walking around, he's looking at all the people. And stuff like that. And that's where he sees the dude getting picked on, and has, grabs the apple and throws it back to him and stuff. And that's whenever he starts smelling, and I'm pretty sure, um, regular Nin still enhances all your body. The enhancers can take that even further. I think that's how it works. So his senses are enhanced and stuff like that. So yeah. He says to the dude saying that it's gonna rain. And the dude says, what are you talking about? Or there's a big storm. He says, look at the sky. It's perfectly fine. A few hours later, they're in a huge storm. And whenever they're in the storm, um, Gon and them are helping out all the people, or Gon is, with the dude that was getting picked on with the apple, going around helping people too, because he has water legs, and stuff like that. Karapika and Lilorio are perfectly fine, and they're just standing there pretty much, and yeah. When we're, um, Lidiorio and Kropka tells him the re- They ask the dude, the proctor, or the captain says, Tell me why you want to become hunters. And that's when Lidiorio and Kropka say, We don't want to tell you. Viscone tells him that his father's a hunter and left me as a child. So I see why he wanted to become a hunter so bad. Or why he is a hunter so bad. And yeah, so, whenever the fighting and the dude's about to get thrown off gun, what he does is that he jumps up and grabs a rope from one of, from the sail and swings and grabs the dude before he can fall and stuff like that. And Kuroko and him and stuff get along after that. And so they go on, and that's when the captain gives them the right coordinates to go. And they're going to the top of the mount, um, top of the hill, but it kind of looked like a mountain because, like, how far it goes. It was like a slanted mountain, like if you took a mountain and flipped it on its side, pretty much, with the top on the bottom, and the top being on its side, pretty much. And yeah, so the dude that can spy on him, Go knows he's there instantly because of his um nin sensitive abilities and all that. 
going fine with it, and they go up, and they get to the test, and I'm saying Grimsel's, like, he's not dense or anything, so he got through it easily, and he just practically grabbed something and started sitting down and didn't say nothing. Then this is Kropika's, like, why is he not thinking, and Kropika gets it. He's about to, and he's about to tell Rolorio, but he's flipping out about the questions and stuff. And that's whenever I'm gonna say Golem goes up to him whenever he's about to swing before he gets close enough to hit and grabs the stick with them all with he still thinking that he has the stick in his hand. So does Karapika, and him swinging down with nothing hitting Karapika's, um, will shoot his swords and stuff. And that's where they seem go with the stick instead. And then she says, dun dun, you have passed, wow. And then Lilaria's like, what, how do we pass? And that's whenever again says, because there's no way to answer that, so you just stay silent, is the answer. So they walk off, and that's whenever they walk into the hill, top of the hill house, and that's whenever they see a magical beast, or a magical beast with two people hurt, and they're hurt. Or he rushes over there instantly and stuff while the magic beast jumps off with Gone jumping off also catching up to it completely kicking it breaking branches and stuff and stuff like that and this instantly destroys the arm of the you know the um, magical beast and the magical beast is screaming and stuff and he says, I give up, I give up. Before Gohan can punch him in the face. Gohan stops. And that's when Kropika's like, that speed and that strength. Oh, how can a child be that strong? Because they're already pressed with Gohan's physical attributes. Whenever, at the beginning, because Gohan was, his jumping ability was his, like, strong suit, I'm pretty sure. And stuff like that. But yeah. That's where they, the uh, other dude jumps down trying to save him and stuff. And he says, um, Miss, why do you want this one? And she turns around and says, How do you know I am a, a woman? And he says, Because their voices are totally different and all that. So they confess, but <laughs> they, they still go, but. It's hard for the one dude to carry him because Gone broke his arm. But they still get there. And that's where they walk into this restaurant. And this is whenever they, one of the magical beasts says, says the password. I don't remember it completely. And he asks for three for the black back room. Those three go back there. And they're sitting, and Gone's like, I can't wait for the food. That's whenever there says, Gone, don't you know that was like a password? And he says, oh, so no food. And that's whenever it kind of turns into an elevator. And it goes down, and this is whenever you get introduced through some characters. Whenever they look, you get Tompo. And all the people there, I don't remember all the names, but I remember what their moves were. But yeah... Whenever he walks up, and Topo tries to introduce and try to sip the drinks, that's whenever um, Gohan throws the drink in the air before and kicks it, destroying it, saying that, no, that's too much. Whenever he opens up, he smells it, and he says that this juice must have been bad, and stuff like that, because it has an off smell to it. And that's when Topo says, in his head saying that their lacuan is tasteless. How can he even tell that's in there or smellless and all that? And yeah, that's whenever they walk off and kill while well, walks onto the scene asking for some more juice from that guy.
and yeah. And the dude's thinking, how can if he drinks any more, he'll be he'll die from dehydration. That's when he uh, smiles kind of and says that I was trained for this. I don't. I can't be poisoned and stuff. That's when Tompo looks at him while chugging a drink. And yeah, that happens. And that's whenever the first thing happens. They start running and everybody keeps on dropping off. And whenever little Oreo tries to like start stopping, that's when he go and talks him into to keep on running and stuff. And we get to the bottom of the staircase with Gon and him right um kill while starting a race saying first one to the top the loser has to buy them dinner. And that's whenever they run off, but you cut to Lolorio and Krupka. And Krupka asks, was he for real about the money part? And he says, of course, money can buy everything. Krupka says, take that back, Lolorio. And Lolorio says, only if I had money back then, my best friend wouldn't be dead now. And Krupka hears the whole story about his friend that he needed a medical procedure, but he didn't have any money for it. And yeah, that's when we see Go and hit, run all run right by them. And go and way ahead of um way ahead of Kilowatt. Okay, I'm back. But yeah, Go wins. That's when he tells Kurupka, or not Kurupka, but Kilua that you have to buy me dinner when we get out of this. He says, alright, alright, but this is what Kilua thinks in his head that I didn't think any other kid in the world can run and do stunts like that except me and stuff like that. Because I would say, even in the anime, I don't think Kilawa didn't go full speed. And stuff like that. So, yeah. That's when a version the this dude walks out saying that, don't believe that guy. Um, he's not the real Zamini. Or examiner, I'm not sure. And he shows him this monkey looking thing with the examiner's face after he says that this forest is full of creatures that hide themselves on humans. That's when we see cards flying out of the crowd and hit the examiner. And and he dies. When the dude, the, the person dressed up as the, or they thought was dressed up as amateur, catches it. That's when the ninja says, "Yeah, so he's, he's not the amateur." And that's when Hosoka says, "No, he is the amateur because a amateur should be able to block a meaningless attack like that." And he says, he said, I take that, I take that as a compliment, but then he says, if we pull another stunt like that, I'll kick you all the Zam. And that's whenever they go into the forest with Osoko getting jumped by the people, and them returning, Kropka and leaving, but they return and stuff. And they get but well, but this is where Gon steps up to the scene, and Gon already has a special move, but he has it to his mastery form. So he says John can woo while punching the ground, completely destroying it, grabbing Lolorio and Karapka, and throwing them really far. Because I think Karapka was still awake, so I'm gonna say Karapka catches Lolorio. And that's when he thinks that kid's strength is monstrous. And 
This is one of our circuses. <laughs> a prime, prime apple. Just ready for a picking, but no. It's not ready yet. It's not ready for this tree. Uh, uh. And stuff like that. And whenever it happens, whenever it starts fighting, this is whenever Deki or Gone comes in with a leg sweep kick, hitting his legs, actually flipping Hosoka, and so Hosoka's surprised. And this is whenever he feels Nin coming off of him. He's like, oh, even better, you have Nin. Oh. <laughs> and stuff like that. And pretty much, Hosoka grabs his leg in the air. That's whenever Gun takes his leg and activates his new special move that I made up. And he, it's pretty much transmuting with enhancement at the same time, which causes him to turn his aura into um, a armor-like substance, but it's not um, conjurer, because it's not conjuring up a real-life weapon that people can see. And people, and anybody with Nen can't see the armor around it, only if they use Gyo, I think. Gyo. Those weird names to Nen. But yeah. This is over. He goes to kick Hosoka. Hosoka thinks he can dodge at like the last second, acting like he got hit. But this is whenever he feels something really hard hit him. Um, like, almost, um, like three inches away from his leg. And that's where he's like, oh, you must have some kind of nin type. What type of nin? I took you as a handsman, but that seems like a conjurer that can hide his weapons. No, it was something different. It was transmutation. Oh. And that's whenever Gillen comes in with a John Kenwu paper. Wait, no, it, it was scissors, yeah. And he goes to slice Hosoka, but Hosoka dodges, of course, with his chest getting cut, and he's like... <sniffs> and he says, even better, we'll see how strong you are. But yeah, and whenever they start the battle, Hosoka uses bungee gum, which, because, I'm gonna say he told him his nin type, and stuff like that. I'm going to say Gon is using Geo, so he sees um, the string stuff coming from his finger. Or like rubbery something. Something. <laughs> and he's like dodged it. And that's when Hosoka says, smart kid, you know, uh, um, I'm using this. And this is when Hosoka turns off the visibility that he can do. And says there's no point of hiding it anymore. And stuff like that. And, but it's still really effective, as you guys know. And this is where Gon says, I have no time for this. And Gon takes his hand, and he says, paper, and he, I'm going to say, yeah, he says, paper is hitting Ahsoka and him jumping off as fast as he can. And him making it back, and this is where they get into the food match. When they get into it, they get tasked to defeat the pig. But wherever the pig comes, what Gon does, he kicks the pig right in the face. While people are trying to hit it right in the face, but it, it doesn't seem to do damage. While they see Gon kick it, and they get instantly knocked out. And then I'm gonna say Kilawa finds out that the top of their head is their weakness, and people get it. And this is when they see a whole bunch of pigs being carried to them. And that's whenever um, they say, You must cook. And that's when the gun says, um, It's a cooking contest, I shouldn't just cook it normally. And this is when people start seeing him cut a piece of meat off and start slicing it into thin little pieces. He gets other ingredients out of the place and stuff like that. 
herbs and all that, I guess. I'm not sure if they give you anything else except the meat. But this is where we, they see him get a pot, put water and all this type of stuff. And he gets, um, like, he starts making noodles. This, like, I don't think they know what noodles are. I'm not sure. But I'm just going to say there's no, like, noodles there and stuff like that. And they see him cooking for a while. Wow, everybody already went up. And they're looking at what Gun's doing. And he gets a bowl out. He pours. He puts meat and all that stuff inside. And he pours this stuff on top of it. And I'm going to say he has two bowls. He has one huge bowl for the other dude. And one regular sized bowl for the girl. He walks up there. Places a huge one next to the dude. And the small one next to the girl. And he says, here you go. And the dude eats it. He gives it uh, okay. But whenever she eats it, she asks, what is this called? And he says, it's called ramen. And she's like, ramen? I never heard of it. Where's it from? And he says, the east, I think. I'm not sure. I'm, I, I don't know where Japan is. But I'm just going to say he says, in a east land, you can find um, these types of food dishes that you should check out. Stuff like that. And, yeah, he gets okay from her. While people's like, okay, exotic dishes. And, um, somebody sticks a pineapple inside one of the dudes. Inside the stomach of it, so there's just pineapple chunks in there, and that's whenever the headboard has to come down and give them a new quest because they can't please her, except one, and stuff like that. Whenever they get to the eagle eggs, and they get shown what they gotta do, whenever Gone feels some wind gonna come up, he jumps down backwards and grabs onto an egg thing, instantly getting blown back up. And that's whenever he gets a whole stack of eight eagle eggs. And he says, here we go. Here's some food. And people go down and pretty much get everything, get all the eggs and all that. And because the big dude, the dude that was like, everybody gets one, even the ones that didn't participate, but after they seen this kid do it with such ease, they kind of went down, and Gon's pretty much redirecting everybody to go and stuff, going up and down, Every, everybody that passed, passed, and everybody that failed, failed and stuff, and this is where they go back into the blimp, and this is where the match between the old man and them happen. But because Go has Nin and stuff, and they go in the matches, but the dude's on two feet because he Go has Nin, and I'm gonna say he never really noticed. So whenever he headbutts him, he hits him with a Nin based attack with no defense Nin, pretty much, and no like tense of the muscles. And this sends the dude back. And this actually harms him a little, but he's fine. But this is where we're going, grabs the ball, and he wins. He passes out. He calls the people that are driving the, um, the blimp and tells them to slow down for somebody. My request. And that's where you get to whenever they go to the tower and stuff. Wherever they get there, they're looking around. Some people are trying to climb down. This is when Gon's thinking, I might be able to jump down there. But then he thinks, whenever the monsters came around, and he thinks, I might be Aiden. Whenever he's about to jump down, this is when Hercule, um, Kropikus tells him to come over here. And that's where they find the little openings and stuff. And everybody gets in the same. And they go through until they get to the matches. Matches are the same, but I'm gonna say the first match goes to Gone. Gone just kicks the dude. 
No, I'm gonna say he picks up a pebble and chucks it at the dude, hitting the dude in the head, knocking him out, and stuff like that. It's the next match. It's the smart dude versus Tompo. Tompo just throws water on top of, or juice on top of his, or not his, but the other enemy dude. Third guy, Kurapika goes against. The same thing happens. The fourth guy, um, wait, if they win the first match, then I'm just gonna give the the third match to kill well when he does have that whole scene and stuff. And yeah. This is where they get to like the you know, like sacrifice room, I guess. And because they don't have any time wasted, so they don't have to wait all that hours, so I'm gonna give them like because they had to wait there for like a whole two days, right? I'm pretty sure. Or like a day. Two days and a half. And because they didn't have the whole match, they don't have to do that. But it's still that walk up to three goes by. But this is when Gones tells them what his plan is. Where they get to the wall, Gone just punches it and steps them, have to pickaxe the way through. And they go on, but Gone has a. There you have a. They're not like the dead last, I'm gonna say. They're the 10th place. I don't know, 4th, 5th, 5th, definitely 5th, going 5th to 6th uh, because they had a race at the end, and all that, Tropica, 7th, Oreo 8th, and right behind them on his back is Tompo, and they get down there, and this is when they have to wait there for a little while and stuff like that and that's where they get off and they go to the boats where they get to the boats they get told what the test is and they get their number it's still the Hosoka and he does the fishing line thing but easier instantly this time and runs off with greater speed actually not getting poisoned this time so yeah this is when we don't skip to the snake part. But I'm gonna say what he does instead of like just grabbing it and going in, he takes the snakes, blowing them to pieces, and grabs the antidote and they do the whole mist thing and he runs out of there and stuff like that and yeah. This is he then we're gonna get to this last part of the phase and pretty much same as matches, but going wins his, and we get to the last fight. It is Hosoka versus him, and he runs upon Hosoka, dodging his bungee gums that people can't see except the instructors because they're using Geo because he's still hiding them to misdirect everybody else and stuff like that. So then he's dodging them, and this is where we. Start shooting paper text constantly, actually hitting Hosoka. But this is where Hosoka uses bungee gum on one and tries to redirect it back. But that's whenever Gone takes his paper blast that he was about to shoot and combines it with that one, He's putting his hand in into it, turning it into a rock. And then he he's right up on Hosoka. With like a even stronger John Kim Wu rock attack than normal, and punches him straight in the gut, sending him flying, and go ultimately passing out from exhaustion because paper is his weakest attack or his hardest one to control and stuff and use and stuff. But Hosoka acts like he's passed out, which Kilwa brothers know he's not, and Kilwa still went back home and stuff, and stuff like that, and yeah, he wakes up, he gets a hunter license, and that's when he hears about Kilwa, and they go to the Zoldic family, and yeah, 
Oh, um, what was next? Mm, yeah, oh yeah, so they get to the Zoldit family and kill one and and Lil Lor not kill but Lil Lorio and you know the other dude gets the training while Gon gets like ten times the normal training and that's whenever he's able to push open the all five gates with his normal strength. Oh I've been already had a hundred subscribers though, but I couldn't do my video at all. I'm going to shut up my phone real quick, actually, where you guys can hear me better. Because I figured out why you guys couldn't hear me. I feel like I'm done for not getting this out earlier. But it's because my phone was laying flat where my sound comes from. Because I don't really have, like, a new phone. I, I didn't want a new phone at all. I just settled for, like, a regular old phone that won't. It's not a smartphone. It's just a regular old Samsung and stuff like that. But yeah, um, I heard you guys commenting down about my weird cat noises in that one, and somebody even pointed out the exact time of it. That's because my cats have weird meows for some reason. Like, yeah, but I'm gonna get started. So yeah, they already went to the Zodic family, and Gon's been training. And I think I accidentally didn't tell you what happened with the paper move. It's because I must have skipped over it if I paused it. But what I was planning to do was him punching into the other paper rock, turn it into a rock combining with his punching the silica. But Gun did ten times the train. And they get to the butler and stuff. He does the whole thing, but he already knows where the thing's going at, even before it happens. Kind of predicting it. He gets it all right, except the last one, because he told him that things, um, in the world, things will trip him. Kilo comes back, and this is whenever they're going to the fighting arena. Um, Kilo says, how many gates could you open at... The testing gates, because he says even with your regular strength, I bet you could have opened up all um, three different doors. If you want to say the arm wrestled before, in his regular old strength, and he could open it up. And if I never told you this, this was because I, I love who you do, Hakusho. Personally, I, I just do. Like, I get people like really strong characters like Dragon Ball. But if you compare like Dragon Ball and Yu Yu Hakusho, I kind of think Yu Yu Hakusho is better for some reason. I just like it more. But all the other Dragon Balls are pretty good. But yeah, so. And Kilowa tells him to hold it back. And. What I got this move from is Yu Yu Hakusho, the spirit cuffs. Guess what Gon has? The Nin Cuffs. And stuff like that. So pretty much his Nin sealed, just building up and all that. And he has to use Nin. But he's using to move around. That was part of his thing. And he's... While they're leaving, the dude gives it to him. And stuff like that. And in the like name cuffs, Don says, and that's when kill us. What is this nin you guys keep on talking about? And that's when the guard says, that's the reason why the Zodic family is so strong. Um, yeah, the Zodic family could use nin easily. And Killua asks Gon if he can learn nin. He says, I think we're able to give people Nin by pushing our Nin aura into people. So right then and there, Gon puts his hand on the back of him. He forces out his Nin, open up all his pores. Which he still gets it down easy, just like normal. And then he explains all the Nin types. So he pretty much knows all the basics of Nin. And he's learning how to use Geo and stuff. I, I forget what it's called. There's weird 
The two names that I keep on getting mixed up is Geo and Gotch. I don't know. One of them's the eye thing, and one of them's where you can fluctuate your Nin from like defense to attack. So yeah. He's trying to learn that with going, teaching him by doing the slow kicks and stuff like that. So they get to the fighting arena. And that's whenever going up. And the guard also gives Kilawa Nin cuffs, saying that um, if you use Nin versus regular people, you can easily kill them. Saying that going must have really good Nin control to not kill somebody in one shot. And stuff like that. And Gon says, yeah, I had to because my trainer told me, or my master told me, all about how Nin could destroy people so easily. So Kiyoha puts on his cuffs, making his, like, making him way stronger, or get way stronger in the time right now. But they get to the matches, and pretty much Go is like air palming everybody still. Like, I'm stopping right before he hits them. No, he doesn't have Nin on, so he palms them. But it's way harder than his normal palm was back in um, in the original series. So they, Killua still denies the match to go up to the higher um, rooms. And he still goes through the bottom one. They get to the 50th floor, that's when they meet Sushi and stuff, and Sushi um, um, can tell that they have Nin, and he asks them that, how do you, who taught you Nin, and stuff like that. More, I want to say he can't really tell if they had Nin, but whenever they get in the ring with Kilowatt and him, he, um, his master can tell that Kilowa has Nin, and Kill or, they can't tell, but I'm going to say Kilowa had these cuffs on for two months already. I'm going to say that. So whenever he feels him use Nin, he still has Nin, but it doesn't, like, spread out everywhere. And stuff like that, that's whenever, um... Cuffs break open, I'm gonna say. Whenever it punches him with Nin, I'm gonna say that it will automatically activate your Nin. It, it's not like it's breaking the seal. Like, you can, like, turn off the seal for a moment and stuff like that. So, this will be, like, the permanent training. Making him activate Nin instantly. Making the block pretty much useless. And that's when Sushi's like, oh, how do you know Nin? And gets punched in the face. And flew out the ring and knocked out. And, yeah, that's when they're out. And Sushi's master's like, who's the one that touched you, Nin? And that's when Rekilawa says, ask Gon. Because the only reason why I have Nin is because he has Nin. And stuff like that. And so he asked. He says that it was the student of my father. That's whenever he tells him who who asked who's your father. He says, Gen, Gen, Gen Freaks. I don't know. And he's like, oh, him, a hunter, right? And stuff like that. And he asks, so you do know my father? And he says, of course, we're, like, students from the same master, I think. I'm not sure. So, and he asks, how long have you been learning then? And he says, for two years. And because, you know how long it took Sushi to unlock his then? I think it took a while. And he can only use the basics for, like, a whole year of training. And he asks how far you and Nin, he says that I can even use my Nin type to create my special move, he calls it. And he asked, um, what does it do? He says it takes Conjurer, um, um, 
transmuter, no, it takes transmuter and enhancement types. That's whenever he claps his hands saying that, so young, but you already mastered, you can already use two different N types. And stuff. And that's what he's called it. He says, Jen Kun Ru, I, I say it all the time wrong. But he's, and he's like, oh, rock, paper, scissor. And he says, yeah, um, my, and also my armor. Let me explain. So, I got the armor from hockey, from, like, One Piece. But it's, like, the visible hockey, pretty much. But it's really strong, still. Yeah, that's where I got the defense from. And he says it's he also he says it's a transmuter and what it does an enhancement and he's and he's like how is it a transmuter? It looks more like a conjurer of Nin. He says, No, I changed my property of my Nin to iron or like hard steel and stuff and I use my enhancement type Nin to enhance the transmuter at the same time, making it easier and stronger and increases my attacks in my leg. And I'm going to say, I'm going to kind of make, I'm just going to bring in a whole bunch of like animes and put them together into this. And I might make another one of these. I might put like two hour videos. But I'll probably do that whenever I get 150 likes, which not be long, so I probably should get onto that. But, um, and he says, so, that's your two special moves, and he says, show me. And he does the rock, or I'm gonna say, they go outside to where trees are, at the skirt of the, the town. I'm sorry, I'm, like, drinking hot chocolate because I like hot chocolate but they go to the outskirts of town to where all the trees is and this is a gun puts his hand over his fist saying Jin Kunri I, I can't say it I'm <laughs> sorry rock and he throws his fist um hitting a tree sent completely uprooting it while blasting a hole into it shooting the pieces of the tree Destroying other trees for like a hundred meters in front of him and like twenty meters wide. I get. I don't know meters, but I'm trying. I'm pretty much taking like my hero's fifty meter run. Yeah, a hundred meters long and twenty meters wide, spreading out the further it goes. And he says, Impressive, what's your other type? I think he was enhancement too. I'm not sure. But this is when he sees Gon stacking up the pieces of wood that he broke in half. And until he has a huge tower, and this is when he says, Scissor, jump in the air using it, and slice hand in half. Um, making them all sit upright into like targets. I was gonna say, and then he says paper and stuff like that. If you think I'm making this paper really, really strong, I'm just gonna say because he knew the Hanser type's weakness was that had no long range moves, so he focused really hard to help out his paper move a lot. He sticks out his hand, and what he does is how he can shoot his paper attack so fast is that instead of it being like a ball or anything, what he does, he takes in his hand, starts rotating it into all directions, making it really fast, and he launches it with a burst of strength and energy of Nin into his hand. Making the shot way faster. 
and he shoots multiple of these, destroying the targets. And this is when he says that the armor can be used on all parts of my body. And he says that it's pretty much the it's pretty much stronger than um, most Nin defense. He says, and he says that this one was told by my teacher saying that your attacks might be strong but you need something to break through somebody's Nina defense and stuff like that and stuff like that and that's why he created this move and he asked where his master is now he says that he's wandering the world saying that he had a mission given to him he says a year ago I'm just going to change it up. Him studying some kind of animal. And stuff like that. And so, yeah. He doesn't know the specifics, he says. But, yeah. Now, I'm just going to skip all the regular fights. It's the same. Four masters. It's a top guy versus go. Those months of training was for Killua and Gon still doing his regular routine, but like enhanced more because he's stronger and stuff. And this is whenever Killua, I'm going to say, creates a special move because he is stronger and stuff. Because of the Nen cuffs. And Shushi, I'm going to say, has Nen cuffs too. I'm just going to say, but I'll put Shushi at the strength of them whenever they, at the time right now, whenever he's battling the top guy, I'm going to say Gon strength, and Killua, I'm going to put him at, um, after Great Island strength, and Gon Bro, I don't even know what to put him at. I might have to put him at the ant arc thing. Chimera, Chimera ant arc. <laughs> Not in his rage mode yet. But, like, as soon as they got there. Because if you guys noticed, he got way stronger all of a sudden. So did kill a lot, I think. Because I think they kind of hit their full strength the whole time. Anyway. Because, like, if you guys didn't notice, suddenly they got way stronger in the middle of it. Not sure if I, like, don't remember everything and there was, like, a secret training arc. I know there was a training arc between the two guys and stuff like that. But I know that they weren't that strong even when they were fighting the guys. And stuff like that. Killua. Yeah. So it's top guy versus gun. What Gun does is that because his defense is the strongest and stuff like that, um, he pretty much kicks the tops using an enhancement, throwing them back at each other, launching them back at the dude while the dude's spinning, saying that you can't defeat my defense. And the dude notices a collection of aura in his legs, even pulling the actual air around them to what everybody else sees, swirling around the person of Gon's leg. And on the Naruto says, Oh my god, what is this weird man in? And why is Gon just lifting up his leg up to his ultra defense, saying that nobody ever broke through it? And they see him slashing his leg down. Slamming him to the ground while breaking his um, fake leg. The crowd starts cheering, saying that nobody ever got behind his defense. And nobody could withstand attacks and kick them back with his bare feet like that. Their bare foot and leg and all that. Not bare foot, but you know, like, no armor gone or anything like that. 
And then he gets to kill one, they say. These two young kids have been amazing and surprising these past um, months. I'm gonna say like five months. And this is maybe five months. And they're wondering just how strong will this kid be? Seems like even Gum got stronger over it. And that's whenever Killawa already like shut off his name cuffs. So when the dude does the whole thing, Killawa is runs up to the dude and the dude takes off his whips, but whenever it shocks him, Killawa still like grabs the whips and turns them off. Saying, do you really think that type of thunder can hurt me? Putting his hands together. Whiting them out. Saying, thunder. And grabbing the dude's arms while thunderbolting him. And that's when the crowd's like, what? How did this kid do that? Does he have some kind of... Wait, there's, no, there's weapons allowed. But they ask, what type of weapon was that? It's almost it's like he shot electricity from his hands. And that's whenever people look at his hands and stuff, and they see that he has no weapons on him. And all they see is his hands have sparks around him, saying that these two young kids have some, some kind of power. This can be shown to all the other um, floor masters, saying, what are these people, and how do they become and get these special abilities? And stuff like that. And because Gun isn't hurt, um, still Gun goes against the other dude with the electricity. But whenever he tries to bite him, what happens is because um, those snakes are pretty much controlled by men. Or like conjured, I'm not completely sure. But he knows that his legs are as fast as accent. And he has some amazing strength because like he says he's probably a hamster. And he goes to attack his legs. Or attack him directly. But this is whenever Gome puts his arm out completely. Saying, bite it. And he goes to grab his arm because he thinks this kid's too cocky. But all he sees is that the snake stopped before it even touched his arm. No, or it touched their arm. I'm just going to say it's not like a round his arm anymore. Because I'm going to try and make it like armlet hockey. Saying that whenever it touched him, the whole thing broke apart. Back to him and he says, go and walks up to him. By, I'm going to say, what he gone and did, he stomped to the ground. Making a rock appear behind him. Or he was trying to go in one direction backwards, but he couldn't. And he says, I can't turn anything. I can only go forward. He goes rushing forward, but this is where we go. People see him getting in the weird stance covering his fist. This is whenever, instead of wind, go wind goes towards it, it almost seems like it stopped right there. And all of a sudden, a huge pressure gets shot out. With like a spike of wind and energy, it feels like. It spiked up. And they see go put his head to the Almost looking like he's about to stand his head to the ground with his fist going over really high. And slamming the dude in his face. Just hitting him to the ground. And destroying the ground completely. And they say, wow, that's amazing. This kid's strength is unbelievable. And they say, Gun Freaks wins. And stuff like that. And they try to take Shushi, but because Shushi is as strong as Gun when they left, they couldn't really hurt Gun anymore like that. So Shushi could win against the arm guy and stuff like that. Mm, yeah, Shushi pretty much punches. Um, I'm just going to say that Go and put him through like physical training work. Where he doesn't have to punch a dude a lot just to defeat them. Like you've seen him do in the actual show. But yeah. But he acted... 
He pretty much uses Geo because I'm gonna say they already mastered it. Yeah, I think the actual I thing is Geo, so I'm gonna whenever you hear me say Geo, I mean the I thing for now on and stuff like that. I won't even mention the fluctuation part anymore. But yeah. So he sees the arm. He keeps on dodging it. The dude sees. It's like, oh, he must be using Geo. And I'm pretty sure what type was she, she? And stuff like that. Let me think. I think he was like a conjurer. Okay, so I just figured out what Shushi's um, nin type is. It's a mipilator, which I don't think it was much to do with a mipilator, so I won't change it to conjurer. Just for easier for me. And I'm going to say he develops the power. Because there wasn't no strength differences between the trying to get into Great Island Gone to Gone in the battle and stuff like that. So I'm just going to say that he learns how to conjure up weapons. And he gets idea from Gone's master. But what he does is that he takes a weapon, I'm going to say. What would be a good weapon? I'm going to say a dagger for him. And that has a mouse that appears next to it. Or wait, a chain with a huge bowling ball on the end. And pretty much whenever the bowling ball gets shorter, um, or, or like a big ball at the end, it's a small one at the beginning, but the bigger it gets, I'm going to say, the stronger the wind and the strength between his attacks will be. So, whenever people, and whenever it gets as big as him, it will activate and turn his sword into, it's like, berserk mode, I guess. Enhance her and Shushi. And that's gonna be cool. And this, this ability is what I was gonna give, like, I was gonna give... Deku, whenever I was going to make, what if Deku had an end? And stuff like that. This is just like a sneak peek, I guess. But yeah. But pretty much what the Berserk mode does is that Shushi's end will go, like, increase a lot. Causing him to, like, of course, whenever your end gets stronger, you will get stronger, of course. But to the sword to pretty much get larger whenever he cuts now and his ball to become disintegrate pretty much giving him a huge blade that practically can cut through everything and stuff like that but this will cost a lot of energy but the dude he raises his hand up and people see a dagger appear into his hand and a chain at the end this is one of our Shushi, because you know him as doing a lot of punches and stuff. So what he does, he does a lot of slashes with one hand. And this is where they see the ball start swinging around, and it starts getting bigger and bigger. And this is whenever they see these slashes, or the person with the visible arm sees the slashes. And whenever... It gets about as big as, um, I don't know, like as big as my cats, I guess. Because you're a big kitty. You're a big kitty now. But whenever it gets that big, um, it gets that big, um, it activates. It starts, like, getting stronger and it breaks through his arm by kind of destroying his nin. Or destroying stuff around it. That's the special ability. He calls it the the dagger of destruction, I guess. And it breaks through his arm. And he takes that dagger and covers it with an end. Making it way stronger. Making him stronger whenever he does this also. 
or increasing his control of Nin, kind of how Doan did whenever he's digging through the mountains and stuff. And him pretty much slicing through his Nin is what his ability is. But that will be used in Deku a different way. Then I'm going to say whole thing happens and it is Gon versus um, Hosoka after his whole match has gone down. But pretty much what happens is that Gon has been working on his move. Which I said, I do take a lot of ideas from other animes. Even though I'm trying to do a, a, a Pacific anime, I'll always bring in other stuff. So, if I say, what if Deku was like a... What if Naruto was like a Jindoroki of all the tail beasts? I would make him get adopted by Jiraiya. Even though I'm going to make a what if about Jiraiya adopting him. So yeah. But this is whenever Gon runs up. And and what Hosoka sees is Gon spin around his um, grab attack, I want to say. And fire appearing behind him. With people being amazed, saying that did he catch his leg on fire by how fast he moved. Hosoka turns around, getting met by a kick to the face. And Hosoka's like, yes, it's time to pick it. And Gun does a barrage of kicks and punches, pretty much switching between them and stuff like that. And, yeah. And he's pretty much getting hit a lot. And Hosoka's taking a Taking damage. You know how so Soka just sat there in the actual show and kind of got hit a lot? That's what's going on. But it causes a lot more damage to it. It causes a lot more damage to Hosoka. And that's when Gun says, um, fight me. Hosoka brings out the... Sorry, my family just came back home. But, um, yeah. This is when he says... Um, he starts fighting for real, using bungee gun, attaching to his face. But what Gon does is that every time he gets closer to him, Gon punches the bungee gun, sending him flying in a different direction. And people see Usoka's hand moving every time this happens, saying that Usoka's using his magic to control it. But it almost seems like it's like something's attached to him. And whenever Gon punches it, Go and gets flown somewhere else. And the Proctor is not giving Osaka cheap like points. Because he thinks Gun can probably beat him and stuff like that. Or like they're really close smash. That's whenever Gun um, says, I'll defeat you with my final attack. Launching himself down with his armor boots going away. And all of it's going to focus into his fist. And people see wind getting gathered up. And they're like, oh, Gun's about to leash his move. But this is whatever. Rock's starting to get picked up. Which, how much strength is into this one punch. And the little person says, says that this seems like Gun's putting everything of his power into it. With Rock everywhere and people almost get sucked out of their seats. What Hosoka sees is a huge light ball pretty much and covering the whole field saying that I can't dodge it so I must take it head on. But what he does is that he covers his hand in bungee gun trying to catch it but Gon's fist goes straight through it, punches Hosoka in the face with it slamming him into the ground with the gun getting launched into the air by Hosoka's kick. Hosoka gets like badly injured and I'm gonna say people see his like nin on his arm disappear and sees like a mark and sees his like arm has stitches in it. Or never mind about that. I'm just going to say they see his arm pretty much broken to all shreds. 
by punching Gon in that huge attack. And Gon has a huge punch mark inside his stomach. Wow. Osoka. Um, people think Gon just threw a punch. But he did. But what happens is that they see Osoka's side bleeding with Gon's hand in a scissored form, saying, scissored while getting knocked out and flew out the ring. And doctors come up there and say that it seems like Ahsoka was struck by some kind of sharp object and stuff. And that's when Ahsoka says that it wasn't an object. It was Gon's hand that sliced through me and stuff like that. Gon gets knocked out and he has to take a break and all that. With his ninkuffs cuffs off, of course, and making his regeneration faster. Like these little added stuff is that the anime never pointed out what Nin actually does automatically. But yeah, Nin does actually increase your healing if you guys didn't know that. It was random stuff in it. I'm pretty sure because Gon can't instantly break his arm like a thousand times and heal it. And we already know that Nin can be used as like an ultimate healing. Because if you guys haven't seen the anime, in Greed Island, all those cards were made out of Nin. So that's just telling you that somebody's Nin can heal somebody almost from death. And yeah, so he wins the whole match. They go off into, you know, looking for Greed Island. And that's where I'm going to leave it 